Hi everyone, welcome back to the History of Football channel. Tonight's video is going to be another Forgotten Football Ground as part of my Forgotten Football Ground series. I've done such grounds as the Baseball Ground, Bainden Park, Filbert Street, the Dell. I've done a couple of League Arn grounds and I've done the Stadio Del Alpi in Serie A. But tonight's video is going to be about Vetch Field, the former home ground of Swansea City from 1912 to 2005. Before Swansea Town were formed in 1912, the ground was actually used by some amateur teams and there'd been various sporting events played on Vetchfield. The actual area was owned by Swansea Gaslight Company and the word Vetch comes from a type of legume from what I've read and it actually grew on the area of where Vetchfield was to be built. Swansea Town, now Swansea City, were founded in 1912 and the Swansea Gaslight Company gave Swansea Town a seven-year lease on the on the area which was to become Vetchfield. The first match to be played at Vetchfield was on the 9th of September 1912. Swansea City played against Cardiff City and it was a one-all draw. In the first year that Swansea City, or as I should say Swansea Town, played at Vetchfield, players from home and away sides had to wear knee pads because the ground was very rough. It had coals and cinders and there was reports that players were getting scraped up pretty badly. So in that first year at Vetchfield, everyone wore knee pads when they played football. In 1913, the centre stand was built and it was a stand consisting of a few wooden benches and it also had dressing rooms and offices for players and staff. In 1927, the double-decker stand was built. It was around this time that Swansea City were considering expanding Vetchfield to a capacity of 60,000 people, but them talks never materialised. One thing about Vetchfield as well, which made expansion difficult, was it was an odd shape and it wasn't parallel to the streets surrounding it. So if you look at other old grounds, the stadium is parallel with streets and terraced houses and stuff like that. Vetchfield wasn't, so it made things hard to build around. And in some circumstances, in some corners of the ground, it actually backed onto people's houses, so people could watch the game from their balcony or from their garden. In 1960, floodlights were installed at Vetchfield, and to commemorate that, there was a friendly played against Scottish side Hibernian. In the 1970s, the club was in severe financial strain, and... They were saved in 1974 from going out of business. The council bought Vetchfield for £50,000 and also got a grant on the ground. In 1981, the East Stand was entirely rebuilt at a cost of £800,000. And it was around the same time that uh, the Bradford City fire happened at Valley Parade. As a result of that, the West Stand was demolished. And in the 1990s, there was... Uh, safety concerns so the rear north stand was closed and it reduced the capacity of Vetchfield to around about 12,000 people. It was always going to be inevitable that Swansea City if they wanted to aspire to be in the top division or in one of the higher divisions that they had to as part of their plan build a bigger stadium a better stadium and it, in the late 1990s and early 2000s Construction started on the Liberty Stadium where they play now. The last league game to be played at Vetchfield was against Shrewsbury Town. That was on the 30th of April 2005. Swansea City won that match one goal to nil. The final official match played there in any capacity was the Wales FEW Cup final. Swansea City beat Wrexham two goals to one. As I just mentioned earlier, Swansea City moved to the Liberty Stadium in 2005 where they remain to this day. It wasn't until a lot later though that Vetchfield was actually demolished. It was demolished in 2011. So you think about some other grounds where they demolished straight away. Vetchfield sat there vacant for six years. Looking at some records at Vetchfield, the biggest ever attendance for a match there were 32,796 people 
attended an FA Cup fourth round match against Arsenal. That was on the 17th of February 1968. The highest ever league attendance was on the 1st of October 1955. 29,447 people turned out to watch Swansea City against Leeds United. The lowest attendances I could find, the official lowest attendance was on the 18th of September 1973. 1,301 people watched Swansea City play against Northampton Town and there was also an attendance of 1,311 on the 26th of April 1976 that was against Brentford. The highest ever score at Vetchfields was recorded on the 15th of September 1982. Swansea City beat Sleema Wanderers 12-0 in the European Cup Winners' Cup. The highest ever league wins at Vetchfield, one of them come on the 15th of April in 1922. Swansea City beat Bristol Rovers 8 goals to 1. And then in 1936, on the 22nd of February 1936, Swansea City beat Bradford City 8 goals to 1. Swansea City's biggest ever loss at Vetchfield come on the 14th of September 1946 when they were beaten 6-1 by Bradford Park Avenue. And there was a couple of other teams that beat them 6-1, but this was the first time that it had happened in 1946. Vetchfield also hosted Wales national team matches. There was 18 international matches played between 921 and 988. And uh, Wales, of course, used to play at Ninian Park and Cardiff Arms Park as well. So that concludes my video on Vetchfield tonight, former home ground of Swansea City, formerly known as Swansea Town from 1912 to 2005. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. I do remember Vetchfield. Uh, I was about 18 year old when it was last used and uh, the last 18 or so year it's been used, at, they've been playing at Liberty Stadium. So. I've seen Swansea City for half my life play at Vetchfield and the other half play at the Liberty. But I hope you enjoyed the video tonight. Let me know in the comment section below if you did. I'm looking to do more of these videos in the future. A couple of people requested that I do Vetchfield in the comment section below and I did that. Before that, a couple of people said Elm Park at Redden. I did that video. So if you have an old ground you'd like me to do a video on, just let me know and I'll get it all together and I'll publish it. But this has been History of Football. Thanks to all the recent subscribers and everyone that's been commenting and liking the videos. It's much appreciated. This is History of Football signing off. And I'll catch us all later in the next one. Alright, tally bye for now.